Hi guys, what's up? It's Alex here. Today we are here with the Go Kart Championship Winter Series. This is the first round of that sort of season. And yeah, so we've got five people racing today. Or well, six people racing today. Myself, my dad, uh, Tom, and his dad, which is going to be listening to the Championship as Phil. And then we've got James and his dad. So, <laughs> the yeah, three dads. So it should be interesting. Hopefully an interesting race for all of us here. You can see my dad's, this is qualifying. My dad's starting in pole position for that. I'm in the second position here. I, I really don't know, my starts are always bad. I don't even know how to sort of get around it. But um, yeah, so we are looking to the lights. There we are, pointing at the lights. And yeah, so top left is James. Top right is Tom L. And bottom of the screen is my camera view. So there you know who is who. And I'm pretty sure you guys all know who's who in terms of what the helmets and the overalls and everything looks like. So yeah, James is currently leading his yellow and black overalls. Then it's Tom L in his dark blue overalls and his white helmet. Then myself, my blue overalls, blue helmet, red gloves. And then if we see anyone else, I'll point them out to you guys in this. So you can see James is in the lead here. I think we've got uh, James' dad just behind us here. So he'll be looking to try and go for the overtake, but then what's happened there? It's Tom L, I'm not too sure, but we've managed to get through here and down the straight. We're down the inside. Are we going to be late on the brakes? Looking down the inside. Oh, we nearly lost it there on the brakes, and Tom L manages to go back through there. He had an, you know, he told me after qualifying he had probably the best car he's ever had. So that's a terrifying combination for us, obviously, because we already know that we're probably not going to be fast enough, but then. At this point, I'm just going to let everyone through. So that was uh, James' dad, then my dad. And then we haven't seen Phil yet. It's his first time going go-karting here. So obviously he's going to be slower and, you know, he's not going to be used to it and whatever. So you can see up to the top hairpin here. Tom L's right up behind James. James, is he going to give space? Not quite enough space for Tom L to get through here. And he's still right pressuring there, but he can't quite get that move done. Definitely going to be putting the pressure on him here to try and get that overtake done as quickly as possible so he can obviously get the space to do a good qualifying lap in here. Or he could back off, but then he's probably got the threat of James' dad and then my dad just behind him. So he probably doesn't really want to back off here. You can see on my screen here, they're pretty you know, pretty close to each other on the screen here. Um, so, But you can see here, Tom L's looking down the inside here. James is going to give him space. Yes, he is. He's gone through. Tom L is through now. And he's going to be hoping to put in a good lap time. I've backed off. I didn't really sort of mention or explain why I did that. But basically it was to try and get the best lap time possible from sort of a bit of clean air. But I was really struggling. I'm not going to lie, guys. I couldn't have. I couldn't find any grip with this car. I seem to be sliding about all over the place. It's kind of tough. It's probably the biggest workout in a long time I've had in a go-kart. Because it was like I have constantly need to correct the car when it's sliding all over the place. But... Yeah, I'll show you when it get to a certain point where it was uh, certainly sliding out an awful lot. So through this top, looking at my screen here, this is where it sort of started to get a bit slippery. It's this left-hander coming up here. This is where I had a lot of trouble. You can see I'm having to correct it in the middle of the corner, having to steer out of the corner, which is obviously not what you want to do. And you can see Tom L is pulling away from James by a substantial amount here. This is worrying for all of us when you see that sort of speed come from Tom L. You know he's going to have a good cut underneath him and he's got the speed with him today to probably go on to get pole position. But I still don't know this point because I'm just looking at my times. I'm looking at on my race really, at my sort of view ahead. I'm not really concentrating on where Tom L is. Obviously, I probably expect him and James to be the toughest two competitors Um here, so that's why I'm expecting, uh, well that's why I backed off a little bit here, so I didn't want to get involved in a battle, but we're closing up now on James's dad, up to the top hairpin here, at this point I'm not too sure what to do, because we're quite close to the end of the session here, I thought I'd just keep going 100%, because I didn't want to back off, and you know, that was the last lap of the qualifying session of the, you know what I mean, so I wanted to make sure I got every lap time in I possibly could, but all very sideways through there for myself there. I was really struggling, struggling a lot with the tyre grip here. So my dad's actually caught up to, to James now. He's probably going to be looking for a move. There's probably not that long of this session left. This could even be the last lap of the qualifying session. I think it is. And what's that happened there? There's a bit of spin out. I think that's Phil who's spun at the top hairpin here. 
and everyone has to slow down and avoid him. So it looks like that could be the qualifying session over with uh, all of us here. I'm not sure if Tom Mel, I wasn't really focusing on his side of the screen there, but he, I don't know whether he got through, but you can see I'm just slowing up here and uh, waiting to see if there is the, the checker flag. Is it the checker flag? I couldn't quite see there on uh, uh, James' point of view there. Is it the checker flag? I'm not sure, maybe it wasn't. I couldn't quite see that. I don't think it was the checker flag, so it looks like we've got one more lap. So I backed off and I've got a gap here. I've got one lap now to try and get pole position in my eyes. It's probably this or nothing for pole position here. I can see I can see that Tom L's way far ahead of everyone else here. He's probably got a six, seven second gap over James in second place here. I'm really struggling. You can see they've seen the checker flag there. Tom L's already seen it around the final proper corner and up to the start finish line. There's still no checker flag. What am I saying? Yeah, I keep thinking it's the checker flag, but it's, this is definitely the last lap. Oh my goodness, I don't know what I'm saying here, but this is most definitely the last lap of the race because there's only a tiny bit of uh, time left on my sort of monitor screen here. I've got all the audio lined up here, and this is most definitely the last lap of the qualifying session. So I've had two, what I'd say, quick laps. You can see I'm still having to correct through that corner here. It's really not great for me here. I didn't feel I had that bad straight line speed, but I just had the tyres felt like they had no grip. There's the checker flag, finally! Anyway, so that's our qualifying look. Tom L did get pole position as I assumed. I was in second place, then James's dad, um, then James, then my dad, and then Phil in fifth place. Lights are out and away we go. Tom L doesn't get the greatest start in the world for him, but then you can see in the second phase he manages to get uh, through there a bit here. And you can see James's dad manages to get into second place there and, and I always seem to end up in a battle with him so I knew this was going to be a tough race from now on. I knew from qualifying I think I was at hot, uh, four tenths to half a second behind Tom L so there was quite a big gap and I knew my only chance would have been in the first couple of laps of the race when his, his tyres were cold and he was most likely to make a mistake. So that's why I was really, really trying to get past uh, James' dad as quickly as possible here. You can see I'm looking to the inside here but he sees me and pushes me onto the grass here and well I had to back out in that instance there because the marshals were there and I couldn't really put their, them in any danger there by trying to get you know stay on the grass any longer so you could say quite dangerous driving there pushing me onto the grass when I was already alongside but it is what it is and now I can already see Tom L is pulling out the gap here he's pulling out enough of a gap he's probably got already a second over James's dam so that's quite kind of tough now for me but you can see I've got so much more straight line speed here and I really, really don't know when to overtake. It's always tough to overtake James's dad because he's always really good with his racing lines. He's quite aggressive though. I think he'll say himself he's quite aggressive when he is trying to defend and attack. So it's going to be tough to overtake him here. But I think at this point I already felt, you know, you don't never want to be a defeatist and feel that that's the race over but when you see that much of a gap open up to Tom L I knew it was going to be tough to close down that gap considering that the time in qualifying you can see here he's moving in a straight line he saw me go to the left hand side and he started edging me back to the left so it's going to be a tough race here normally when me and uh, James's dad he might he might be listed as Will's dad in some of the other championship Will and James are brothers so you know hope you guys know that by now so yeah in the, the past, that we've sort of always ended up crashing into each other in the previous races, so hopefully that doesn't happen again, but it seems to be a previous experience is I go for a move, then it always ends up in an accident, which is not clever, obviously, but all of this is allowing James to just keep with us here. He wasn't quite on the pace of me and his dad in qualifying, but he's, you know, as we're battling over second place, James is managing to keep up. I think James has always sort of come stronger in the races. Qualifying towards a bit of a learning curve. He gets used to the track then in the race, and specifically in the second race, um, he always seems to be a lot better in that second race. He seems unstoppable in those second races sometimes. You know, down the back straight once again, I'm in the slipstream looking one way than the next, but still I can't get that move done. But we've had a good run through there. Will's dad, James' is dad, <laughs> slightly makes a mistake through there, but we can't quite optimise our run through there as quick or as best as we could. I thought we had a good run through there, but it didn't really work quite as expected. Anyway, right up in the slipstream now. This could surely be a great opportunity to overtake now. 
and we're right up in the slipstream here. This is um, surely our best opportunity to overtake here. I see him going defensive to the inside. I can't go for the move there. He breaks slightly later than me, but goes slightly deeper into the corner. So that means I'm going to have a good run. He gets sideways through here. Is this a great opportunity to overtake? Maybe we're looking down the inside. We've had a good run through here. We're down the inside. It's side by side. He turns into the corner. Where am I supposed to go in that instance? I don't know. He's off the track. He's spun round, I think. And, uh, well... In all honesty, guys, I have no idea what I could have done in that instance. I was down the inside. I think pretty much sort of 90% of my cart was down the inside. And then he steered into the corner like I wasn't there. And at this point, I knew that James was going to be right behind me. So I had to go defensive all of a sudden. So, yeah, I don't think that was my fault at all, to be perfectly honest. I mean, I'm sure you guys might have a different opinion. But I don't think that was my fault. But, of course, leave your comments and opinions down in the comment section. It would be nice to see them. But... I don't really think that was my uh, fault, but yeah, it seems that when me and uh, his dad always race, we always end up crashing into each other. It's just the way it is, I suppose. But um, yeah, you can see Tom L screen top right. He's starting to catch his dad now. Obviously, it's his first time go karting, so Phil will be a little bit slower than the rest of us here, but he's just getting used to it, and uh, Tom L is starting to catch up to him now. So. He'll be overtaking his dad anytime soon here. Might even get out of the way for him, not too sure. Taking a bit of a wide line through there. Tom L. Ooh, that wasn't. That nearly actually ended up. Who is that? Is that is that Tom L? Uh, sorry, what, what am I talking about here? Is that Phil or is that um, James's dad? Not too sure there. Not sure how much time he actually lost through all that. But anyway, you can see on my screen, I really am having to go defensive uh, from James. I always know that he's at. Really fast in a straight line. He gets a pretty good run through that last corner always. So I always know I have to go defensive. I think actually uh, Tom Mel's coming up to his dad now. Yeah, he's overtaking Phil now. So that was actually James's dad that he overtook a second ago here. So there you are. He's made the move now on his dad. And Tom Mel's got a massive lead. And he's overtaken. Or he's lapped two cars now. Anyway, up to the top here. Pin it. Oh, there's another spinner. Who is that? I couldn't quite make it out whether that was James's dad or Phil. I think it might have actually been... I think it might have been J James's dad, but I'm not too sure. I have to work that out in a second here. A little bit confused at the moment. See if we, uh, if we catch anyone. You can see on my screen, we are catching up to someone. I could tell that their helmets are kind of uh, slightly different. The same colour, both black helmets, but they're slightly different design. So I'll be able to figure out uh, who is who in a second here. So we're going up to catch him. Yeah, this is this is Phil we're catching up to here. So that was James's dad that was spun around there. So yeah, I think James's dad actually spun around and managed to get going just in front of my dad. I looked to the inside of Phil. See, can get there side by side. Just need to not steer into each other, eh? Yeah, good driving from Phil to obviously realise he was lapped down and give me the space. And obviously same for James. Really followed me straight through there. Now down the back straight here. I'm going defensive once again. I always feel that basically I just have to defend it every single time now I get into a position because someone's always going to be attacking me unless, well it depends who it is, I know if it's either James or Tomel, I'm going to have to go defensive up to that top hairpin every single time and will of course, um, I feel they're probably the quickest in the straight line, quickest through the straight line so I always have to defend from them, probably throwing uh, Will's dad as well in there, but yeah so that's, that's always tough for me and maybe Job you can throw in there as well so pretty much all the, the light people have really good straight line speed obviously I have to go defensive if I'm realising they've got you know, I've got them right behind me so that's why I always go defensive but I pulled out a bit of a gap here on James he's slightly dropped back here I don't think he'll worry about that too much he'll probably catch up any second uh, now but <laughs> yeah he's not that far uh, behind me still but that gap has slightly opened up it's not a massive gap here I'm not too sure. There was a time I remember that I didn't go... I normally obviously was going defensive to the inside. Well, I don't go too defensive, you can see here. Look, I take my normal line here, and then I realised... I hit in my sort of side of my eye. I saw him sort of right close behind me, so I was like... Yeah, I'm going to have to go defensive again, aren't I? <laughs> so, I realised that... It probably wasn't the best idea to go wide that time. Basically, the wider line gives me a better run through the corner, so I don't have such a slow lap time. But if I go tighter into the corner, I probably don't lose too much time. But, you know, obviously it's good to be on the inside because you can sort of... If there's somebody on the outside, they normally run out wider. And you sort of can not give them space, so that makes any sense. So down to that corner once again, the hairpin. We managed to keep our position still. James has slightly dropped off here. 
I wouldn't say it's like a massive disaster for him. He could still overtake me here, but he isn't quite close enough to overtake me at this point here. Even if I took my wider line to the top here, then I don't think he'd be able to go for the overtake. But look at this absolute crazy race here from Tom L. The, the amount of speed he had, he was, he's, he's at least, he's like, I don't know, he must be at least 15 seconds ahead. Maybe 10 seconds ahead at this point, I'd say. Crazy and absolutely amazing race here. And... Well, it's tough for me to look at this because I'm like, wow, that is absolutely insane how fast he was this race. But then you congratulate him as well, obviously. Obviously, when you're a huge amount faster than us, it's obviously a bit down to the car as well. But he did drive it incredibly well. He didn't put a foot wrong throughout qualifying and this race so far. He hasn't made a single mistake, which is obviously what you need when you're trying to get a race win. But I always find I end up in a good battle in go-karting. And especially when there were six of us here today, I felt that it was always going to be an interesting race. But yeah, so James has caught up to us now, and we've probably got three or four laps to go here. So about two minutes to go at the session, I'd say. Tom has got this wrapped up unless he makes a mistake or he catches lap traffic, which is exactly what he's done. I'm not too sure who this is. I think this might be Phil, so he's going to be overtaking his dad once again. Oh, Phil's run a bit wide there. Is James, not James, is Tommy going to go on the outside? No, he's not. Phil going one way, then the next. Oh, that was a bit over the curb there from Tom L, but he's managed to get that move done. He's just so much faster than everyone else here today. He makes every move look easy. And James still putting a pressure on me here. I'm still worried about whether he's going to be able to go for an overtake here with a couple of laps to go here. So at this point, I know we're very close to the end of this race. You can sort of gauge. It's 10 minute races, so you can all, all sort of gauge just what sort of time of the race we're at. And you can all sort of have a look at the marshals and what they're being told. They always get told from a couple of laps uh, before the end, they always get told something, so I always know that. So I always have a quick, quick look out for that. But James is closer than he's ever been here. He's gonna have one more chance at it, is he? I think, maybe, we'll see. I'm not sure if Tom Hill is going to cross the start finish line just yet. We're up to the start finish line. That's the checker flag there, so he doesn't have another chance. He did get very close towards the end there, James, but he didn't, couldn't quite get the move done. And we keep our second position. So there we are. Tom Hill takes the win, and myself in second, James. My dad finished in fourth place, with James' dad in fifth, and Phil two laps down in sixth place. Now, the second race. It's reverse grid, as always, for the second race of the weekend. Sorry about the top left camera being a bit foggy. The lights are out and away we go. Wow, look at that start from Tom L. It's impossible to defend from that. You can see James and his dad going side by side to sort of box Tom L in, but James can't quite defend from him there. I managed to get past my dad and uh, Phil as well. So currently James' dad leads this little sort of uh, situation and I'm not too disappointed in that too perfectly honest. I was hoping that he could be able to defend from Tom L because I knew this is aggressive style, but look at that. Straight around the outside, nothing that James's dad could have done about that. There's no way he can defend from that. Now, James trying to overtake his dad up to the top hairpin here, and I'm looking down the inside of James. He's left a gap. I'm a bit sideways under the braking, but I get the move done. I'm into third place now, and it's back to pretty much where we were in race one, isn't it? I'm a, well, just uh, sort of the start of race one. I'm sitting behind James' dad, I've got James behind me, Tom L's rocketing off into the distance already. So I sort of knew where I could maybe go for an overtake here. And up sort of around here you can see I've got a really, really good run. I'm right up in the slipstream here, I look one way and I stick to the outside this time. Braking earlier once again, but you can see I'm sliding under the braking, it's really tough to get the car slowed down. But we just about managed to do so, and we're still right up behind James's dad here. Can we pull off a good move here to move us into second place and sort of keep any chance of a championship alive here? Because with Tom L looking set to take the full 35 points, we really need to get second place here to be on 24 points. Obviously, with two second places, we need that to try and have any chance of staying within this championship battle here. I get a good run. That's my fault there, 100% my fault. I just slightly ran wide and hit the side of James's dad there. I tried to get a bit of the cut back, but I just hit the side of him there. I didn't really judge that entirely correctly, but whatever. It is what it is. Now, we're right up behind James's dad. Can we go for the overtake once again down this back sort of section here? This is what the main straight, I'd call it at least. See, I can see that James is being attacked 
they've been attacking now, so I go a bit defensive here. So I'm in a bit of a tough situation here because I'm having to attack and defend at the same time. And I sort of feel like if I let James through here, he could go and get the overtake, then I could try and overtake James. I always sort of think that in the back of my mind, but then I think, well, that's a bit defeatist, isn't it? Letting someone through out, else through to try and get your overtake done. Especially if they get that overtake done and you can't follow them through. That's probably not the best idea in the world. Anyway, we're right up in the slipstream once again here. A really good run. We're looking to the inside. He leaves to get down the inside. We go for a move down the inside. We can't quite break late enough here, but he sort of put him off under the braking, I think, there. He slightly probably saw my cart down the inside there, and it made him break even later than he normally does here. So we can see we're definitely putting the pressure on here. James is dead. This is exactly what we need to try and overtake him here, because obviously we know his sort of style of racing. It's going to be tough to overtake him here. Now, through the first corner, what I call it, and now down the main straight, right up in the slipstream once again. You can see I get a really good run here. Am I going to be looking to the inside? No, I'm not. Sort of a half arsed move down the inside. And, oh, I'm into the wall. I think James actually said sorry to me after the, the race for that, but I couldn't really, you know, he couldn't really do anything about it. He went for a move, like a legitimate move down the inside. There wasn't any contact. I sort of went to avoid the, the move, and I sort of had to steer out the corner, which meant, well, I ended up just putting myself on track to the to tire wall. So now I've got probably about a four or five second uh, gap to try and catch up to James and his dad now. Definitely make the, the race a bit more interesting for me here to try and catch up. Uh, I think also my dad's quite close to me here as well, right behind me. So he's going to be looking to try and overtake me, but I'm going to try my best to keep him behind, obviously. So now, you can see Tom Elt is across the line there. And wow, what a gap he's pulled out already. It's incredible. I think he had a 15-second gap, if I remember correctly, for the, um, the standings after that first race. Incredible. If he can do anything like that... We technically 215 seconds is a lap so if you can pull out 15 seconds in both races you nearly get a lap on me there but there we are I can see Tom L overtakes his dad once again Phil just getting out of the way which I suppose is good for him just to get experience and getting out of the way is part of that experience as well learning how to let people through which is good and you can see I am starting to close in on James and his dad here James uh, well James's dad at least isn't exactly the fastest this weekend by the look of it here he did say his cart was pretty bad he also did mention that Tom L's cart must be incredible to get that sort of, sort of speed off the start line. I think we all agreed, including Tom L, that his uh, cart was great. And Tom L, uh, sorry, no, James has gone for the overtake there. And he's got past his dad there. So that's sort of good, sort of bad for us here. I thought maybe second place was still on the cards if uh, James was behind his dad. Because if, you know, if he's behind his dad, he could sort of keep holding him up. But now James is through into second place. It's going to be really tough for me to get past uh, both of them now most likely it's going to be tough to get past his dad and then it's going to be too much of a time too much of a task i'd say to get to james after that as well but who knows we will see what that gap ends up being but top hairpin once again we're closing in that gap you can see we are definitely closing the gap down i think my gap to tom l is probably not that sort of i'm not losing that much time to tom l really in this whole thing especially i think i definitely drove the best in this part of the race here because i felt i had nothing to lose and I was just completely like 100% and I felt this was definitely the best part of the race for me that's where it was definitely the fastest so out to the top here but once again it's visibly a lot closer now between me and uh, James's dad James is still there still visible but I doubt we're gonna be able to get past his dad and then be able to catch James and then overtake him it does sound like a bit too much of a task here and now down to the top hairpin here this is James, you can see, trying to overtake Phil now. He's right up behind him. He's going to look to try and get the overtake down the straight here. And when I saw Phil there, I was like, this is a good opportunity for me to gain a position here on James's dad. And we can look down the inside of James's dad. We're looking down the inside. There's slight contact. It's side by side. And Phil sort of gets involved with that whole thing. He nearly, uh, he nearly actually hit the side of me there, but he backed off just about. I think I was, I was trying to go for an optimistic move down the inside of James's dad. It went a bit wrong. I got a bit sideways and I just about managed to control it in time to not hit Phil. So, yeah, sorry about that, Phil. I didn't mean to nearly crash into you there. But once again, we've had a really good run down this straight here. And you can see, what is that? He's just cut me off. He's gone from one side to the next. What is that? That's really aggressive driving there. He sort of weaved to the left-hand side when he saw me trying to go around there. So I'm not sure what's really trying to happen here. It's quite dangerous, actually, this sort of driving from uh, James's dad here. 
it's kind of worrying for me sort of sitting behind him here because I feel like I'm not sure what he's going to do when he's sort of weaving about in a straight line and it's kind of a bit worrying because I don't know what's going to happen here. You can see once again he's looking one way the next. Then I look to the inside trying to look, go for a move down the inside here. Not going to work out this time. But I felt it's going to have to be quite a big move down the inside to get past and all of this is just letting James go far ahead. He's, we're not going to be able to catch James now especially we're about two and a half minutes away from the end so probably about four or five laps to go in this race. So we've got to definitely just be careful here and if we can get third place we'll take third place and if we get uh yeah if we get third place i think we're equal on points with uh, james we're both have 22 points and look we're down the inside now we've got a nice move down the inside he steers across the front of me before we even get to the braking zone what i don't even know to be perfectly honest i find it really hard to race against james's dad because he just is so unpredictable Sometimes he races really like fine and then suddenly stuff like that like I was down the inside We weren't turning into the corner, but he turned across the front of my cart and spun himself around I mean obviously I'm gonna be biased from my point of view But I, I feel that I couldn't really have done anything there I was down the inside and then he sort of just came across the front of my cart like what my I, I can't disappear That's what I said actually I sort of shouted it You might have heard it in that first race when he tried to turn into the corner. It's like I can't disappear That's what I said to myself it's just a bit frustrating, but anyway, you can see now James overtakes uh, Tom. No, sorry, that's uh, Tom L overtake his dad again. Not sure what's happened there then to make him lose a lot of time. Maybe he spun or something, I'm not too sure. You always spill your first couple of times, do it, do it right. But we don't have too long to go in this race, but it always frustrates me sort of racing against James' dad because I don't know what he's going to do. Like, he's perfectly fine off the track, but I just find it on the track is really, really quite aggressive and it's kind of hard to have a nice clean race because it always ends in an accident especially when I you know I'm slow in a straight line so I have to go for a late breaking move down the inside like, I think I was going to go down the inside there really cleanly there if he didn't sort of suddenly cut across the line but I can't disappear in that sort of instance so I really don't know what I was going to be able to do there but of course it's going to be biased to what I think like obviously I think I'm going to be right in that situation but yeah James is still there he's probably about three seconds in front here so if we have a really good couple of laps, we might be able to close down that gap and to get the second place. If we can get the second place, that would be perfect for me. Well, it wouldn't be perfect. Obviously, perfect would be uh, doing what Tom L is and winning every single thing you possibly can. Pole position, both races. That's exactly what you want for the Winter Championship. But, yes, yeah, the thing about the Winter Championship, it is such a short uh, series, obviously, because it's only three rounds. So, I don't know when the next round is going to be. I'm recording this towards the end of October I'm not sure when the next round is going to be whether it's, in, it's going to be in December or not anyway now James is coming up behind Phil here he's losing a lot of time to him but I think this is the last lap of the race so even though he lost a lot of time trying to overtake Phil there we still come home in third place disappointing at my end I would have liked to obviously been able to battle for the win but it wasn't possible today Tom L was in a league of his own and by the time I'd got past James's dad I couldn't catch James but I thought it was a fun race nonetheless. There's a bit of accidents here and there, but it always ends up being that way. Let's race two results. Tom L, James, myself, James's dad, my dad in fifth, and then Phil in uh, sixth place. There's the Winter Championship standings. Tom L dominates. He's on 35 points. I'm on 22 points, as is James. My dad and James's dad both on 15. And Phil is currently in sixth place with 12 points. So that's it for this first round of the Winter Championship, guys. Be sure to tune in in probably about a month's time for the second round of the season. Thank you for watching. It's Banag Samad here. Goodbye.